Hello everyone, Melth here to kick off my Let's Play of Skyrim, always one of my favorite games. For those of you who have seen some of my Let's Plays before, this will be a little bit different in style, but not in substance. Style-wise, for the first time I'll be doing more or less live commentary, so it'll be a little bit less polished than it usually is. I think it'll have more of a raw, direct kind of feel to it, which is appropriate for this kind of game and this kind of Let's Play. Substance-wise, as usual, I'll be going into the details of strategy and game mechanics, game design choices, the narrative, the lore, all that fun stuff. I'm going to take this game on on Legendary, the highest possible difficulty, without the usual tricks people rely upon, like followers or stealth or crafting, which defeat the entire purpose of playing Legendary by trivializing it. No, I'll be facing Legendary head-on and showing you how to do that yourself. Bethesda also takes a new kind of approach to this game compared to the previous entries by having this long cinematic opening sequence. Typically their openings are fairly short and get you know, over with quite soon. Their inexperience shows unfortunately. It's one of the weakest parts of the game and kind of a nuisance on later playthroughs, although there are some good aspects to it. It doesn't really show off the great terrain either. And the dialogue is full of clunky exposition, as well as a few genuinely good lines, but too much expository nonsense. All we can do is turn our head at this point for like six more minutes. That's altogether too long. One of their games to all the hey, openness and you. freedom. You're finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? You walked right into that Imperial ambush. Same as us. And that thief over there. Damn you, Stormcloaks. Skyrim was fine until you came along. Empire was nice and lazy. If they hadn't been looking for you, you could have stolen that horse and been halfway to Hammerfell. You there. You and me. We shouldn't be here. It's these Stormcloaks the Empire wants. We're all brothers and sisters in vines now, thief. Shut up back there. What's wrong with him, huh? Watch your tongue. You're speaking to Ulfric Stormcloak, the true High King. Ulfric? The Jarl of Windhelm? You're the leader of the Rebellion. But if they captured you... Oh, gods. Where are they taking us? I don't know where we're going. But Sovereign Guard awaits. No, this can't be happening. This isn't happening. So some good dialogue hey, there. What village are you from, horse thief? Why do you care? A Nord's last thoughts should be of home. Rorikstead. I'm... I'm from Rorikstead. General Talius, sir. The headsman is waiting. General Talius at the front on his horse there. Let's get this over with. So we see a lot of interesting new characters. We've got General Tullius, we have Rayloth, like one sure, of the Stormcloaks. Ulfric, the leader of the other side of the war. Hadvar is the leader of the, you know, well, a soldier in the um, Imperial Legion. Rayloth's childhood friend. And this useless guy, who should not be in the cinematic, Loki. is the military governor. And it looks like the Dalmor are with him. Damn elves. Ellen, one leader of the Dalmor. To so, important characters introduced, but too much time spent on it. Too much dead air like this. We should not be sitting through this every time we make a new character in this game. And this guy's useless. This is Helgen. I used to be sweet on a girl from here. Wonder if Vilod is still making that mead with juniper berries mixed in. Funny. When I was a boy, Imperial walls and towers used to make me feel so sick. That's the good stuff. That's a good line. It makes us feel this character, understand him, care about him. Loke here is... We don't care about him. Why? I want to watch the soldiers. And we don't get enough about Hadbar back there either. I'll talk about why that's a problem later on too. Again, this opening is the weakest part of the game. It gets better from here. Why are we stopping? Why do you think? End of the line. So, almost time for character creation. But first we have a very clunky cinematic coming up here. This game has few true cinematics in it. With good reason. I don't know why they have this one, but it's so unnecessary. It really shows off the weaknesses of their system rather than the strengths. You don't want the opening of your game to do that. You would make a good first impression. Empire loves their damn list. Ulfric Stormcloak, Jarl of Windhelm. It has been an honor, Jarl Ulfric. Raylof of Riverwood. Where'd he go? Weird. Somebody walks behind you for some reason. Lokir of Rorikstad. No, I'm not a rebel. You can't do this. 
So nobody reacts, nobody turns, nobody shouts. It makes the whole scene ridiculous. Plus, we don't care. We don't know who he is. He got like almost no lines that were interesting. Step four. All right, here's character creation at last. Who are you? Good question. So I had you find folks vote on that, and the vote was for me to be a mage. As usual for this series, there are ten playable races. As usual for this series, most of them are completely worthless for all types of characters. On a mage, there are only two ever worth considering. High elves are the obvious choice. They have massive bonuses to their amounts of magic. They get magic skill bonuses. They have superpowers for magical abilities. The other good choice, Bretons. Bretons have a few directly useful magical abilities. They start off with some magical skill knowledge, which is valuable, but have a critically valuable 25% resistance to all magic, which all character types love, especially mages. So, I'll be going, going with one of these because I'll also be playing with Permadeath. I'll talk about the rules of this Let's Play as I now create my character. The only other decision that really matters at this point is whether to be a man or a woman. Being a woman is actually slightly optimal later on in the game, because there are few powers that only work on the opposite gender, and because there are more men in Skyrim than women, it's efficient to be a woman. But for most of the game, that won't really make a difference. The other thing, other thing that matters about it is um, character height. Women, for some races, are shorter, as you can see here, and it turns out, secretly, shorter characters move more slowly. We really should have been upfront about that or not had it in the game. Well, one thing I like about this compared to Oblivion is how easy it is to make a good-looking human kind of character. In Oblivion, you had much more flexibility in your character creation here, but they tend to look just awful if you didn't take a massive amount of time to just customize every aspect of their face. This guy, I think, is fairly sun dark and he's seen a lot of outdoor exposure. One other weakness that Oblivion had too, but Skyrim really shows off, is that you can't make a character who isn't absolutely ripped. Like, this is the thinnest you can be, right? He still has, like, bulging visible muscles, vascularity, and so forth, or it can be, like, absolutely huge. But you can't be, like, just thin or plump or anything like that. Really a major you know, variety of characters missing there. But I think this guy has done a reasonable amount of manual labor. I'll talk more about the character later on when I have time. All this stuff is purely cosmetic from here on out. So, while I go through this, let me talk about some of the rules I'll be playing by. Number one, I do my own stunts. I'll have no followers. None of them to tank for me, because followers are impervious to those difficulties of legendary mode. They don't take extra damage, they don't do less, so they make things way, way too easy. Number two, I won't be using stealth. Stealth should be a legitimate part of the game, but the enemy AI does not react properly to it. They're too stupid, they don't notice you when you're shooting them in the face, it just not really reasonable, it makes the game too easy. There we go, kind of slightly angry eyes there. Piercing yellow hawk eyes, I'm going for here. Right, number three, no crafting at all. Crafting can break the game in half with almost no effort. And even if you put in just like a little tiny bit, it makes you vast, vast amounts of money way too fast, and it gives you huge advantages too. So most people who do less plays of Legendary rely on crafting, that takes all the fun out of it if you ask me. So I will not be doing that. Not even a little bit. No alchemy, no enchanting, no smithing. I will cook, but I won't make any soup. Because soup, believe it or not, is incredibly powerful. Soup can turn into an unstoppable killing machine who can stunlock enemies by just power attacking them again and again and again. I won't be doing that. Number five, I won't be abusing my ability to jump off an object that nobody else can do to get unlimited free hits on people. So I won't just climb up on a cliff and rain down fireballs on them where they can't react and they'll stand there watching me. That's silly. I will, of course, use the train to my advantage and will run around behind objects and so forth, but I won't just send them to get like free hits while they just stare at me with their rather dumb AI. Yeah, maybe a different mouth shape. It doesn't look quite right. I don't like many of the mouth shapes they have in this game. Not bad, I guess. Okay. Number six, I will not be fast traveling. So I have to go down the road and fight the monsters along the way, have the encounters, see all the beautiful sights. It's a good part of the game, really. If I've gone to a place multiple times so it's gotten kind of boring to travel there, then yes, I'll fast travel, but not until I've done it a few times and definitely shown that I can beat the route pretty easily. Number seven, no skill trainers. It makes it too easy to level up certain skills. I need to earn all my level ups myself. I do like the addition of beards to this game. It was conspicuously lacking in Oblivion. Here's a classy man the kind of beard for this mage character. Seems about right to me. Number eight, I won't be abusing out of character knowledge. I'll be trying to role play here. If I can make a character decision that's smart in and out of character, I'll do that. But I won't like go running across Skyrim to a place I shouldn't know exists. Number nine, victory or sovereign guard. If I get killed off in battle, that's it. Permadeath. 
Shit like that's outside of battle do not count though. Like obstacles killing me when I bump into them or a trap that just happened didn't happen to see. Nothing lame. Alright, so Hialti Montrose. And I'll tell you who this fellow is soon enough. You from Daggerfall, Breton? Fleeing from some court intrigue? Well, yes I am. Captain, what should we do? He's not on the list. Forget the list. He goes to the block. By your orders, Captain. I'm sorry. We'll make sure your remains are returned to High Rock. Hadvar's voice actor is one of the worst in the entire game. They have some talented people here, but Hadvar's actor is not doing a good job. All his lines sound kind of mushy and a little bit garbled, and the actor just sounds confused half the time. This scene is problematic one, too. Some here in Helgen call you a hero. But a hero doesn't use a power like the voice to murder his king and usurp his throne. You started this war, plunged Skyrim into chaos, and now the Empire is going to put you down and restore the peace. Scary roar from out there. What was that? It's nothing. Carry on. That line is... Yes, absurdly stupid. This guy lives in a fantasy Give setting. He doesn't have to believe in dragons to be concerned about some mysterious beast roaring. Souls to Blessings of the eight divines. That's a great line. People who have played this series before know there are nine divines, so suddenly hearing people say eight, that raises interesting questions. That's a good part of this tutorial. Now, I'd like this game starts off with an execution. That's like appropriately brutal and dark and takes, you know, Elder Scrolls back to the way it used to be after the cartoonishness of Oblivion. But it's kind of a wasted opportunity because this guy has no name. We don't care about him. If it was like Rayleigh on the block, we would care. So, really, you know, kind of a lost chance there to start things off on that interesting note. But the other problem is that the Imperials here are being like both like incredibly stupid and like absurdly bloodthirsty. And it's not just like, you know, some local officer. It's General Tullius is involved in this nonsense, too. Trying to execute an innocent man here, not going after Ulfric, ignoring these dragon shouts. There it is again. And that? so, when they're trying to give us kind of like an equal I chance of joining the Stormcloaks or the Imperials, to the block they make the Imperials are clear enemies from the start, so it's hard to justify ever joining them. That's really kind of a problem here. This scene is also kind of sloppily done, and as you're about to see, people's reactions will not be well-timed, people will stagger around in a weird kind of way. Really one of the weakest parts of the game, and I don't know why they chose to open with one of the things that they could not do right. What in oblivion is that? Sentries, what do you see? See, he doesn't stagger it, it's a delay there, he gets up weirdly, then he'll kind of not quite even fall over, but then he's apparently dead. But he doesn't even fall, he just kind of stumbles back, and then, and then he's dead. What? Very weak stuff. But now, at last, like 10 minutes into the game, we are finally able to move. Don't have to ask me twice, it's pretty much that tower to get covered from those flying rocks. Oh, what well, do you know? You're all afraid of that, too. And he's ungagged. It's another interesting mystery. We don't really know why he was gagged yet. I do, of course, out of character know that, but in character, you can be wondering that kind of thing, and new players will wonder that kind of thing, too. So there are some strength in this game's opening, but they really bury them under some bad stuff, too. Well, up to the tower go to tell me twice. Oh, gosh. Terrifying. But there's really no drama to it. Anyway, up here is, I'm going to show off one of my ultimate powers that nobody else in Skyrim can do. This is what makes the Dragonborn special. Anybody in Skyrim can shout. Nobody can jump. It's incredibly powerful. Let's get into all kinds of places NPCs can't fall. And I will not be abusing that, as I mentioned before. So, you know, here we see Hadvar again. He's being like a fairly reasonable guy trying to protect injured people and whatnot. Does not make up for his earlier characterization. They should have had him like trying to protect you and telling the officer off, or Jeff told us not knowing about it. That would have made things seem equal. Keep close to me if you want to stay that way. Gunnar, take care of the boy. I have to find General Tolias and join the defense. They're also trying and failing to make this like a dramatic kind of scene here, but too much silly stuff goes on, and too many things just have no consequences. Like, I could be killed by walking into a fire, but like, this dragon here is harmless. He's supposed to be destroying the town, but he can't hurt me. This should be like a crazy, dramatic, scary scene, but it's like walking through his wing, he doesn't even notice me. Again, this is the low point of the game. Everything from here is better. I don't even know what happened there. Silly physics things happen. You can easily get killed in Legendary by stuff like that. So I will not count that as a death of that happens. He'll never get killed in battle. 
So here's Rayloth again, and we get our choice to join one of them. And really, only one of them is worth going with, and that's clearly Rayloth, because Hadbar tried to execute you for no reason. Fine, I hope that dragon takes you all this summer. We'll swoop down and kill that guy. I do like, you know, Rayloth and Hadbar, how they know each other and so forth. That's good stuff, but they didn't really emphasize that enough. I can cut you loose inside. So, both in and out of character, it makes sense to go with the strong folks here. In character, because they didn't try to kill you. Out of character, because when you get to kill Imperial soldiers with the Stormcloaks, they drop much better gear. So you can make a we'll lot more money this way. Guard, brother. Looks like we're the only ones who made it. That thing was a dragon. No doubt. Good facial Just expressions like here. He looks shocked. The legends. Afraid. The they do a good job with that stuff. We better get moving. Come here. Let me see if I can get those bindings off. Okay, there finally I can move around. May it's been well way too long your for a game that's all about freedom. Won't be needing it anymore. I will take his gear, though. Most of it's garbage stuff, just to be role-playing here. So, oh, I can now also equip my magic at last. All characters in Skyrim start off with a few kinds of spells. Flames for basic attack, and uh, healing for basic healing on yourself. Breton start off with this useful spell, too. A summon. I'll definitely want to be using that. So get these things hot keyed up. A few swings. Now I'll summon this I'm going to see wolf thing, familiar to help me out. Now I'll go my flame spells. Let's see about that so, game. as you can see, of course, I'm going into a lot of very basic details about this game. I'm going to assume you guys don't really know anything about Skyrim, so I'll start off with the very basic stuff, cover all that ground, and then no I'll get to like, the really detailed kind of secret mechanics that I've studied and experimented with. But I'd like to make these things accessible to just about everybody. Ah, the enemy Imperials. My familiar will help me fight them. You see, it takes me about 30 seconds to regenerate all my mana, roughly. I'll go into the details of that later on. I hate this lady, she tried to kill me for no reason. You can see I do not do much damage to her. And she would kill me in just a couple of hits. Legendary mode is pretty tough sometimes. You can also see I most of my mana, and she's not really even hurt. Braille is doing great damage, he's not weakened. Again, the follower is not weakened, only I am. I have to regenerate mana before I can really do anything again. Sure Kill her while she's down, she deserves it. And he murdered that guy who was just standing up. Okay. So as I said, Imperials have pretty good gear, actually. And what really measures the value of gear is its value to weight ratio. Imperials have valuable light armor, storm clothes wear trash. Heavy armor is almost never worth taking, so it won't bother with it. Although actually, I'm gonna have some spare carrying capacity, I know, so I'll take this stuff and sell some of it later on. It will be short on cash. See if it unlocks that door. The character is starving. Come on. Let's get out of here. Days. Cabbages even sound good. Sure, I'll eat some cabbage. Okay. Let's get out of here. So again, this tutorial just goes on and on and on. They don't really teach us much of anything. So far, we've learned that combat exists, but we didn't tell us something about how to do it. That would make things maybe worthwhile, because combat in this game is a little bit complicated. Simple basic tutorial, like lots of strategy, lots of details of the skills of it. But they don't teach, teach us that stuff. And this right like, here is completely pointless, too. We should see the cool you know, environments, but we can't really interact with them in any way. So again, lost opportunity. Familiar, what are you doing? Get in there. So more Imperials and like a pointless fight there. Magic mana again. Magic guy. I'm gonna keep calling it mana, but it is magic guy. It's easy to accidentally hit your own guys if you're not careful. Now you can see that I can choose to do spells either one-handed or two-handed. Generally speaking, two-handed is more efficient until you get to be perfectly supposed to make it good, but that makes it bad. It's still useful sometimes, but basically, the reason it's more efficient to do two hand is that it spends your mana twice as fast. And you might have noticed that while I'm casting, I'm not getting mana back. But I am later, when I'm not casting. Ah, uh, Alta Wine is worth a fair amount. Bread. I can certainly use some bread. I am famished. Anything in this cupboard? No. Well, eat that bread. It has no real, you know. Effect out of character, but in character it's good for role playing to be eating and sleeping and so forth, so I'll definitely be doing that as I try to play out this character. 
Flour. Can't really use that. Tomatoes. Flour. Some of these usually have salt. Salt is actually pretty useful, but I got unlucky. It seems to be randomized to be all flour this time. Potions. That's about all the potions that exist. Done. So we learned Let's potions exist, but not really anything about them or how to make them. Again, not a very good tutorial. Especially not for its length. Oh, uh, somebody's fighting in there. Hear that? And again, the Empire is being pointlessly evil here. They have like a torture chamber. We're always showing the Empire being bad here, but then they expect us to have like an even chance of joining the Stormcloaks or Empire later on. Doesn't make sense. As like a person who's played lots of Bethesda games, I want to join the Empire, but it's hard to just. Finally get some decent gear in here soon. Some strong folk allies will be helping us out. If you're a warrior, you can get your first shield over here. A few lockpicks too, and a book that I'll read later on. I will actually read books for the benefit of those of you who haven't played this game before. Some of them are quite interesting. Out of the way, familiar. So now I get lockpicks, and I can try to pick the lock. There are more in here. Lockpicks are pretty scarce early on. Again, I'll read that book later. Pretty scarce, pretty valuable. Later on, you'll have plenty of them. This is an easy lock, luckily. I'll talk about the details of the mechanics of this lockpicking game later, but for now, I'll just take this easy lock and then move on. Great. So in there is some valuable gear. First of all, a few gold coins, potion, a spell book. You can learn a new spell from that. And this guy is wearing some valuable stuff. So I'll equip these mage items for the first time here. This one gives me more mana that lets me regenerate much faster. Powerful stuff. Then I'll get rid of a lot of the hassles I've been facing as a mage so far. Although I'll still need to get better gear later on. There are locked doors along this hallway, but they're not worth wasting your picks on. Nothing really behind them. And hard to justify stopping when you're trying to run from your life for a dragon, from a dragon and the Empire and so forth. Again, torture chambers, dead prisoners left to rot in here, the Empire is apparently horrible. Later on, the actions of the two sides are equal, but really we don't see that in this scene. That's a good, poor decision on the designer's part, or the writer's part. Alright. What's along here? I don't want to go in there without backup. Orders are to wait until General Tullius. General Tullius, it must be Imperials up there. So I'd like to summon things before fights begin, so I have time to regenerate some of my mana. That's more efficient. Because in a battle, as you'll see, my regeneration massively slows. To about one third of normal pace. So another reason that, especially as a warrior, you're up to join the Stormcloaks is that the Empire carries bows, and so you get a lot of arrows from them. The Stormcloaks don't, so you get no arrows, and that is a major, major problem. I'm playing with very few mods, but one I am playing with is turning off kill cams against the player, and uh, ranged kill cams by the player, because those always glitch out with magic. The only other mod I'm using is um, Unofficial Patch, just to fix some bugs in this game, which there are altogether too many of. Bethesda is a little bit sloppy about that. Again, the stuff is not really worth carrying normally, but I know I'll have carrying capacity to spare, so we'll grab it and sell it. Later on, I'll only really take items that have like a 10 to 1 or better gold ratio, which will hold the weight of this. Another summon. Items. So I usually would not take these boots, but would take everything else. I won't bother with the arrows because they're my mate. Oh, jeez, got shot there. The enemy AI is a very, very good shot, unless you're dodging back and forth. They can't deal with that. They can like, perfectly snipe you if you're sprinting, like in a straight line, but if you're moving back and forth, that's when they're helpless. Now, this oil slick here, I can set it on fire. I do massive damage, but my own guys are standing in, so I won't do that. Later on, you see me use that stuff a lot. It could also completely kill me in one shot if I was not careful on the legendary, so I need to avoid that. Alright, we got him. So, we all survived. And these idiots will stay behind here to probably die because they're never seen again. So I'll demonstrate, I can set this stuff on fire. That deals insane damage if you're standing in it. It would have killed me easily. And it'll be effective against my enemies too, so I'll often try to use traps like that against them. So, what have we learned so far? Fighting exists, but not how to do it. Potions exist. Levers exist. Lockpicking exists, but not how to do any of these things. And there's still very few concepts for the amount of time we've spent here. Oh no, the way back has collapsed. 
Okay. Let's see if we can find a way out up here. Out of character, of course, I know there's nothing in here except for this treasure, but in character, I might as well explore all the pathways. Potions, gold, money. Money will be very useful in this early phase of the game. Later on, I'll be drowning in it, but for now, I need all I can get. That green uh, bar in the bottom right is my stamina. I use it to sprint extra fast. Warriors kind of use it almost like a mana bar to use their special attacks, but as a mage, one of the great things is that you don't need to spend your stamina on those so that you can spend it all on running around without compromising your fighting abilities. Creepy spiders in there. Frostbite spiders are very dangerous and legendary. Their ranged poison attack that you just did there is quite powerful, and they can kill you in one shot if you're not careful. Especially with their bite, which does massive damage and poison attack. But with my familiar to help, I can probably take this out. Contrary to popular belief, they are not vulnerable to fire, nor do they resist frost. They're just equally vulnerable to all elements. Let's see one thing here. Yep. Seems like I was doing too much damage, but nope, it's legendary. It gets much harder to slightly higher in levels, so I want to avoid getting unnecessary levels for the time being. Frostbite then, I won't be using it, but it sells for a lot of money, so I'll grab it for that reason. They almost all carry that. It's a decent level 1 poison. It doesn't really carry its weight beyond that. Spider eggs, those sell for a decent ratio. So again, what matters is like the value ratio. Gold coins to uh, weight. Don't really carry anything that's like under 10 to 1 ratio, generally speaking. In this tutorial where I know I'm going right to town afterward and so forth, I can get away with that, but usually I wouldn't want to. I'm getting hurt by walking into objects, it happens if you do it too fast, the physics are weird, and I'm legendary take a lot more damage. I've gotten killed by bumping into baskets and then like hit the wall and ricochet back to a thousand miles an hour somehow. Silly stuff. I will definitely be continuing the campaign or story if that happens. I'll only call it an end if I actually get killed in battle. There's a bear up ahead. So now we learn about stealth, finally. That's useful, that should be in the tutorial, but really, There's can you justify like just 20 minutes of this stuff with like the few concepts we've gone over? Rather not tangle with her right now. Black bear me, that's fine. Sneak by. In an iron helmet. Nice and slow. Watch where you step. But, as I said, I won't be doing sneak. So we also learned about archery, we hadn't picked up any bows, but Might kinda late in the surprise. game for that. Go ahead, I'll follow your lead and watch your back. So, they call it a cave bear, it is not a full power cave bear. A full power cave bear would kill me in one shot and would take like an hour for it to ship down. This is the game. Cave bears are dangerous. They kind of bully you from security by calling them out like a regular bear or weaker. Alright, well, problem solved. Now, we're near the end of the tutorial dungeon. And in Oblivion, you can now save at this point, basically. And you can then rechange everything about your character easily. Just, you know. As you're about to exit the sewers, you would change everything about it, you wouldn't have to play through the tutorial ever again. But in Skyrim, no. When a new character, you have to do the entire tutorial over again. That is really unacceptable. When it's such a good, like dull, overly long, pointless waste of your time. It's fun the first time, you shouldn't have to do it multiple times. And they don't really teach you enough stuff to justify its existence in the first place, really. But again, I do appreciate them finally trying to put in more effort to their beginning with some cinematics. They just didn't do a great job of them. Wait! Ah, dragon. So this is stealth mode, which I will not be using normally, but for role-playing purposes, I will occasionally duck into it. I just won't avoid fights with it or fight using it. I will there also use it goes. to steal from time to time, because like if you don't use that, you cannot steal it. Even if nobody can see you, they will suddenly no detect it. If anyone else made it out alive. But won't be doing too much of that. Swarming with Imperials soon enough. We better clear out of here. My sister, Gerder, runs the mill in Riverwood, just up the road. Sure, she'd help you out. It's probably best if we split up. I do not get that line. I have never understood it. it. He wants you to stay together. Again. He praises you for staying with him. He thanks you for staying with him. Why did he tell you to split up now? There's no benefit to it. it. Just doesn't make sense. But it is true. We can go off and run if we want to. So at long last, we were actually free. Although it's hard to justify that in character. We should clearly you know, go with him. You should go to Windhelm and join the fight to free Skyrim. You've seen the true face of the Empire here today. And that's hard to argue with. If anyone will know what the coming of the dragon means, it's over. Wait, what? You know, you should go to Windhelm and join. What? Oh, hardly. I don't think even Ulfric could pull a dragon out of his pocket. Lucky for us it attacked when it did, eh? I wasn't looking forward to getting a shave from the Imperial headsman. Little off the top. 
That's a coincidence that is never really justified at any point, and that's unfortunate. Seriously? You don't know? That was Ulfric Stormcloak himself. You have no choice but to be, be an idiot in these conversations. It's kind of dumb. Run in. Come on. I'll feel better once we're undercover in Riverwood. Damn right. You don't have to be a Nord to fight for Skyrim's freedom. You should come to Windhelm with me and join the fight to free Skyrim. You've seen the true face of the Empire here today. If anyone will know what the coming of the dragon means, it's Ulfric. Stormcloak's really a hero worshipper. Well, see a lot of that. maybe not. Dragons haven't been seen in Skyrim for an age or more. But wherever that dragon came from, and whatever it wants, Ulfric will get to the bottom of it. You can count on that. Yeah, he Besides, does nothing. Besides, you have your own score to settle with the Empire now. And with that dragon. That dragon kind of saved me, but I definitely I should so. go join these guys who are Skyrim not trying to kill me. Skyrim people like you to fight for her freedom. Come on, you better get moving. So some very beautiful scenery here. Unlike, again, the tutorial opening zone where we just kind of see this road from a wagon doesn't look very pretty. This is the game's strength. It's how beautiful it is. And they didn't really open with that. They opened with, like, the worst parts of the game for some reason. Not really good showmanship there. See that ruin up there? Bleak Falls Barrow. I never understood how my sister could stand living in the shadow of that place. I guess you get... A wolf. That's unusual how it happened here. But it's kind of different every time. Wolf pelts are worth a little bit of money. I love this kind of aesthetic. Just like the creepy old Barrow tombs. I love the Barrow Whites and the Barrow Downs in the Lord of the Rings. It's one of my favorite parts. I love Viking sagas, things like that. So this aesthetic, this like beautiful, bleak, majestic landscape filled with the, you know, ancient tombs and ancient heroes rising from the dead. That's my kind of thing. So this game was a dream come true for me in that way. The gameplay is very good too, unlike the previous ones in this series. These are it's the like a fun game stones. to play. Three of the thirteen ancient standing stones that dot Skyrim's landscape. Go ahead, see for yourself. So these kind of replace birth signs from games like Oblivion. You can only have one of them. You have to go to new stones to get new ones, which is different from the previous one. But so this one gives me a bonus thief skill XP. This gives me bonus fighting skill XP. This one gives me a bonus magic one. I don't really want any of those, actually, but the magic one, I guess, is a little bit useful, so I'll hey, go with that for hey. now. Well, to each his own. It's not for me to judge. So I need to find the other stones across Skyrim to get the better powers. There's actually one that direction, but I don't know the in-character, so I'm not going that way. The Lady Stone is over there. I grant you bonus hit point and stamina regeneration, which is solid. Not amazing, but solid. I'll show you the best standing stones later on in the game when I get to them. They're a very important part of your character build. Which I think Remember, is fun and a good this idea. Isn't Stormcloak territory. If we're ahead of the news from Helgen, we should be fine. As long as we don't do anything stupid. If we run into any Imperials, just let me do the talking, alright? Beautiful landscapes again. Ah, wolves. Keep your eyes open. I am. I saw them first. And he just kind of walks into the ambush. So wolves are very fast and do high damage at this point in the game. I can't really take them on on my own very well. Ah, so one of my skills has gone up for the first time. Bretons are great at conjuration. That is their main skill and bonus in general. I'll talk more about the details of all the races later on. For now, I'll just keep things straightforward and get the details once I've got the basic mechanics of those don't know them. I'd like to say that the skills are off with a lot of skill at, and I'll be using a lot of a lot of races, so. Using it a lot, which will raise it fast. I do need to loot these wolf pelts. They're very valuable pelts. So we're almost to Riverwood. This is one of my favorite towns. Or River Run, rather. Or, blah, I'm getting the names mixed up. It's a very good town, though. It has interesting characters in it. Yeah, Riverwood. Using characters is pretty. It has shops, so it's actually valuable to you out of character. I think one place to drop the ball in this game is that most villages are completely pointless. Even if they're like in lore or big towns with lots of people in them, you go there and there's like two houses and like no stores. I guess like Shores Stone has a blacksmith, but other than that, I don't think any villages in this game have any stores at all besides Riverwood here. And that's just 
not good. It takes the fun out of those towns, it makes them useless. The game should not be like that. It doesn't even fit the lore. Looks like nobody here knows what happened yet. Come on. Gerd is probably working in her lumber mill. Now, Mother, did I see you talking to Sven? Maybe no. not. Maybe... Never mind. But I would stay away from him if I were you. Intriguing. If you keep on like this, everyone in town will be doing so, off here to meet his sister Gerda, who will help us, hopefully. The characters, characters in this game are often quite interesting and fun. They have relationships with each other, they have interesting dialogue between themselves. It's so much better than Oblivion and Morrowind in that way. It finally feels like you're playing as part of like a real interesting kind of world. Gerda, I'm fine. At least now I am. Are you hurt? What's happened? And who is this? One of your comrades? Not a comrade yet, but a friend. I owe him my life, in fact. That's another line that doesn't make much sense, because I never saved him at any point there. I guess we kind of helped each other, but he didn't need me. Helgen? Has something happened? You're right. Follow me. Pod, come here a minute. I need your help with Pod's your husband. He's... What is it, woman? Up there, on the mill. Pod, just come here. There he is. He sees what us. Are you doing here? Huh. I'll be right down. So, very pretty scenery, and let me show you something interesting over here. So tree stumps by the mill, right? That's appropriate, it's a nice little detail. And this one over here has ants on it. They don't do anything, they're totally unimportant, just like ants. Again, they put in more work and more detail than they really had to, and I appreciate that. That makes for a good, fun game. This dialogue is good too. Hush, Frodnar. This is no time for your games. Go and watch the south road. Come find us if you see any Imperial soldiers coming. Aw, Mama. I want to stay and talk with Uncle Rayla. Look at you. Almost a grown man. Won't be long before you'll be joining the fight yourself. That's right. Don't worry, Uncle Rayla. I won't let those soldiers sneak up on you. So here comes Hot. We can't set on stumps, but again, I'd like to do that kind of thing. It makes right. this you know, conversation more What's interesting to have on? people standing up and walking around and whatnot. Well done in. <sighs> I can't remember when I last slept. Shelt is exhausted too. Need to find a bed. Well, the news you heard about Alfred was true. The Imperials ambushed us outside Darkwater Crossing. Like they knew exactly where we'd be. Another thing they never yes. explained but should. Two days ago now. We stopped in Helgen this morning. And I thought it was all over. Had us lined up to the headsman's block and ready to start chopping. The cowards! They wouldn't dare Good facial to expressions again. That's the strength of this game. Treason for fighting for your own people. Although he's kind of blank, all just kind of staring at us. Seen the truth then. But then, out of nowhere, a dragon attacked. You don't mean a real lie. She turns red, her eyes go wide, she kind of mouth changes. Good expression. They did a good job on that. Was there. So people kind of look like actual people as reacting to some extent. Sounds, we'd be dead if not for That's that good man. stuff. In the confusion, we Especially for the year it came away. out. Are we really the first to make it to Riverwood? Nobody else has come up the south road today, as far as I know. Good. Maybe we can lay up for a while. I hate to put your family in danger, Gerda, but... Nonsense. You and your friend are welcome to stay here as long as you need to. Let me worry about the Imperials. Wouldn't Any that be nice? Any friend of Raylov's is a friend of mine. She's very helpful. Here's the key to the house. Stay as long as you like. If there is anything else you need, just let me know. And her dagger is clipping through her dress. Oh, wow, she has lucky, valuable stuff this time. So she'll offer us all this valuable stuff, which is great. Oh, honey brew mead. Don't leave home without it. Besides that it tastes great, it's a very useful item for a little mini quest you'll see later on. Wow, I'm really lucking out with the gear from her this time. Okay. There is something you could do for me. For all of us here. The Jarl needs to know if there's a dragon on the loose. Riverwood is defenseless. We need to get word to Jarl Balgruf in Whiterun to send whatever troops he can. If you'll do that for me, I'll be in your debt. She has a point. I can't really leave this town defenseless. I knew we could count on you. I ought to get back to work before I missed, but did anyone else escape? Did Ulfric? Don't worry. I'm sure he made it out. 
It'll take more than a dragon to stop Alfred Stormcloak. I'll let them into the house and, you know, show them where everything is. Hmm. Help them drink up our mead, you mean? Good luck, brother. I'll see you later. Don't worry about me. I know how to lay low. I'd better get more information. I'm glad to help any way I can. Cross the river and then head north. You'll see White Run on its hill as you pass the falls. I'm being pushed Jarl by Rayloff right now. I don't mean to be disrespectful as he's ruled White Run hold well for years, but he seems in over his head now. He's been trying to stay out of the war, but it can't last. He's going to have to pick a side. I'm afraid he's going to make the wrong choice. I wouldn't say that. But he and Ulfric have been at odds for years, and I'm afraid Balgruf will end up siding with the Empire because of it. But it's hard to believe that even Balgruf would choose Elisif over Ulfric. And again, we're kind of left with like few options that don't make us look like a moron here. That's a problem with the dialogue choices right, in this game. Then. The best thing to do is like, just tab out and end the conversation before you're forced to say something stupid and out of character. Oh well, you get a lot of good options generally. So, time to walk to Whiterun. Along the way, let me tell you about this character. So, Chalti Madros. He was born in the fourth era, year 172, so he's now 28, going on 29, midway through the Great War. His father was a Nord, a man named Hargrim Heavyhand, serving in the Legion, and uh, who was recuperating after an early battle, was sent back to Daggerfall, where some of the other wounded were sent, where he met uh, his mother, Lisette Madros, who was a serving woman in Castle Daggerfall. She met him while tending to the wounded. Uh -oh. Wolves love to attack other animals, but also me. Luckily, my familiar could probably take it down with my help at least. Oh, two wolves. I'd better get in there and help. One down. Great. Wolf pelts. So, uh... Chalti barely knew his father, who was around for a few years but often being sent off to fight in the war, until eventually he is believed to have died in the Great Battle of the Red Ring when the Imperial City was finally retaken at great cost. He took his mother's family name because in Daggerfall and High Rock more generally, family lineage is very important, so he couldn't have his father's Nord name there. But uh, they grew up very poor in the palace, watching nobles and living with other servants, so he grew up with a sympathy for the poor and downtrodden as well as an envy- uh oh, soldiers better get off the road in case they arrest me again. As well as an envy and you know, ambition to be like the nobles who he saw, to be as powerful and rich as they were. So he began studying magic as best he could in the palace, you know, listening in on lessons of the uh, noblemen there. Eventually, his family was implicated as minor players in a minor political intrigue in Castle Daggerfall, and they had to flee for their lives. So he fled to the Imperial City, where he thought he could learn magic from one of the two conniving mage groups there, the Synod and the College of Whispers. He joined the College of Whispers about two years ago now, and when they heard that the Synod was sending you know, men into Skyrim to try to make contact with the College of Winterholds to form an alliance with them, the Synod decided to send Tjalti on his first mission to make contact with the College first and try to establish an alliance with them instead. Figuring that his knowledge of the Nord ways and customs, because he'd always honored his Nord heritage, would make him a valuable ally, as with the fact that he wouldn't be known by anybody in the Senate, therefore they wouldn't detect him. So thus he was crossing the border from Cyrodiil when he was captured. Personality-wise, he's ambitious and power-hungry, and conniving like most Bretons. Ah, people are fighting a giant, better go help them. Can't let this huge monster kill them, whoever they are. Well, not without knowing who they are anyway. He is a fairly ruthless person, but don't put this link in it for him. This giant is much bigger than the ones we'll see later on in the game and has no treasure, but it makes sense in character to try to help these guys out as best we can in keep distance. Giants are very... I won't say dangerous, they're very tough opponents. They will utterly destroy you in melee combat, but no reason to close to melee with them because they're slow and they have no ranged attacks. So, once you get a little bit stronger, you can take them out, but there's not much point to them, actually. I'll talk more about you know, the reason that you would want to kill them later on. But I won't be doing much of it myself because I don't know how many followers to hide behind and it won't provoke them really. They're quite peaceful usually. Alright. So again, it has no treasure this time. Usually they have a lot of good stuff. You handle yourself well. You could make for a decent shield, brother. 
She says that as long as you actually help a little bit, otherwise she criticizes you. An outsider, eh? Never heard of the Companions? An order of warriors. We are brothers and sisters in honor. And we show up to solve problems if the coin is good enough. Yeah, don't really respect well, warriors. Well, nobody asked you. If you think you're better than we are, go talk to Cody. Oh, is he a mage? See what a oh. warrior of true no. metal is like. Never mind, useless. I better get up to the Jarl. The sunset is coming soon. Don't want to have to go to bed before I get there to warm up the dragon attack. Very picturesque, you know, beautiful steps around here. I love the variety of terrain in Skyrim. So yes, my stamina bar is in the bottom right there. If that runs out, I can't sprint anymore or do power attacks, but I'm not going to be doing any of those. You notice if it runs all the way out, it takes a while before it starts recovering. That's bad. If you simply run it, like, most of the way out... Well, I'll demonstrate in a second here. Off we go. If you run it just most of the way out, it recovers at full speed. So it's kind of more efficient for just sprinting around. Don't run it all the way out. Uh-oh, what's the scarred one? Halt! City's closed with the dragons about. Official business only. Riverwood's in danger, too. You better go on in. You'll find the Jarl in Dragon's Reach, at the top of the hill. What a reasonable, helpful person. Really, most people in Whiterun are quite friendly, and it makes it easier to like Jarl Balgruff. That's kind of the first chance you get to, like, you may be turning against the Stormcloaks who would hate him. But we must have more swords for Interesting conversations, which are clearly less important than what I'm doing right now. Night is falling. Kelsey is very tired after his long, hard day in the road the last couple of days, but very little sleep. Mister, could you spare a coin? I'm As I so said. Hungry. Oh, thank you. Divines, bless your kind. He has a lot of sympathy for children growing up poor like he did. Out of character is very beneficial to do that too, because it grants you much better prices of both buying and selling, so it easily pays for itself if you make even I one small transaction. The market stall so I, can learn the market. <laughs> I love the aesthetic and architecture in this game. Just this, you know, fantastical, grand, impossible, but kind of based upon true Nord Meat Halls kind of thing. I can picture this kind of thing in Beowulf or stories like that that I always loved. Well, that explains why the guards let you in. Come on then. She came out with a sword drawn. I think I'm not gonna turn my back on her. So, you were at Helgen. You saw this dragon with your own eyes? I don't know why I would suggest that I'm a criminal. By Ismir, First mention of Ismir, right. kind of an important background character. I'll now? tell you all about the lore of the scheme later on. Shall we continue to trust in the strength of our walls against the dragon? My lord, we should send troops to Riverwood at once. It's in the most immediate danger. If that dragon is lurking in the mountains, the Jarl of Falkreath will view that as a provocation. He'll assume we're preparing to join Ulfric's side and attack him. We should Enough. not... I'll not stand idly by while the dragon burns my hold and slaughters my people. Irileth, send a detachment to Riverwood at once. Again, a reasonable fellow. Yes, my Jarl. Prevent is kind of a moron who's wrong about everything about the entire games. Game. That would be best. Then while they keep him on. Well done. You sought me out on your own initiative. You've done White Run a service, and I won't forget it. Here, take this as a small token of yes, my the Jarl's favor. There is Moving up in the world. Thing you could do for me. Suitable for someone is that of a, your a dragon skull particular there? talents, perhaps. Come, let's go find Faringar, my court wizard. He's been looking into a matter related to these dragons and Rumors of dragons. A wizard? The stage just can't get any better. Chance to learn the local magician politics and maybe get some spells myself. Better find out the story of that dragon skull at some point. These people apparently killed a dragon once before. So, because the Jarl now likes me, I can take some free items from around here, which is useful when I'm so poor. Faringar. I think I found someone who can Not help this you with your that to him. dragon project. Go ahead and fill him in with all the details. So the Earl thinks you can be of use to me. 
Oh yes, he must be referring to. Farangar's voice actor, actor is also right. terrible. Most yes, people in this game are quite well done, but Farangar and Hadvar are just awful. Well, when I say fetch, I really mean delve into a dangerous ruin in search of an ancient stone tablet that may or may not actually be there. Ah, no mere brute mercenary, but a thinker. Perhaps even a scholar? You see, when the stories of dragons began to circulate, many dismissed them as mere fantasies, rumors, impossibilities. One sure mark of a fool is to dismiss anything that falls outside his experience as being impossible. But I began to search for information about dragons. Where had they gone all those years ago? And where were they coming from? I, uh, learned of a certain stone tablet said to be housed in Bleak Falls Barrow. A dragon stone said to contain a map of dragon burial sites. Go to Bleak Falls Barrow, find this tablet, no doubt interred in the main chamber, and bring it to me. Simplicity itself. So the Earl just gonna send those with chatter, which does not really make sense. You know, I'll the conversation so we'll walk away. You should join Anything the Mages we can use to fight dragon, or dragons. We need it quickly, before it's too late. Of course, Jarl Valgroof. You seem to have found me an able assistant. I'm sure he will prove most useful. Succeed at this, and you'll be rewarded. White Run will be in your debt. Sweet. What are you still doing here? The Jarl said retrieving that stone tablet is a priority. Oh yes, Remember? of course. Going there soon, but I need to get some spellbooks here. So, you wish to master the arcane arts? Oh dear, this is too expensive for me right now. Better get some money and come back. Hope I don't make a bad impression Auction on him. Bleak Falls Barrow with you. The Jarl is come to Dragon's Reach to discuss well, let the ongoing hostilities. Let me tell you more about like the rest of the Bleak great, Falls Barrow. An old tomb built by the ancient Nords. Perhaps dating back to the Dragon War itself. Ah, maybe you just want to know how to get there. It's near Riverwood, a miserable little village a few miles south of here. I'm sure some of the locals can point you in the right direction once you get there. Well, must preserve some professional secrets, mustn't we? I have my sources. Reliable sources. Intriguing. I'm not surprised you've never heard of it. Even I used to think it was just a myth. But not anymore. The Dragon War was a real event, although only the barest glimmer of the actual events has come down to us. Far back in the mythic era, the dragons were worshipped as gods in Skyrim. Many of the monumental ruins that still dot the landscape were in fact built as temples to the dragons. The details are lost, but at some point, the Nords rebelled. After a long and terrible war, the Nords overthrew their dragon overlords. Oh no, many were killed, of course, but many survived into historical times. Why, this very palace was built by one of Valgroof's ancestors to hold a captive dragon. I love those plaster walls Hence back there. Snake, really nice detail on Dragon's them. Reach. Alright. Well. Off to Bleak Falls Barrow with you. Of course you'll have to disappoint him by coming back tomorrow morning to get some spells when I have some money. <laughs> but for now, I'm dead tired after days of running from dragons and running from Imperials and fighting Imperials and running all the way from Riverwood to here and all the other crazy things that have happened recently, so I better find an inn to stay in. Where could an inn be? Well, this big belly looks promising. Ah, the inn sign gives it away, doesn't it? The Bannered Mare. So, an interesting place with lots of NPCs around here with interesting quests going on, but can't really talk to them right now. Well, I enjoy this work Bed well. now, please. Sure thing, it's yours for a day. So, no matter how many I'll times you've been you to room, right a way. room in an inn, they will always insist on showing you slowly, on foot like that. Kind of a waste of time. Like this guy Sidmir here, he's a waste mm -hmm. of time. He complains endlessly about the guards, but he has no real role to play in the game at all. If the Stormcloaks win, he takes over as the commander of the guard, but nothing changes. It's all... a point... What are you doing in my room? Let me know if there's anything else you need. Well, that's weird. Whatever, I'm too tired to deal with this. So, sleeping is not necessary in this game, but it makes role-playing sense. 
it makes you level up your skills a little bit faster, which I don't really actually want at this point, but I'm going to do it anyway because, again, it makes role-playing sense. At this point, I'm quite famished, so I will take this Nord Mead. I need bread and cabbages and good in there to get some actual food instead of all this rabbit food. The security in White One is terrible. Shame. If it's work you need, help. Let's sate that appetite, hmm? Let me sell off some of the things I have here. Alta One sells for a fair amount. So does. I didn't need to sell that. So does Hunting Room I need to keep one of those around, though. I can't really use this much. I don't need all that much salt yet. Wow, this is all so expensive for me right now. Maybe I'll see if I can get some food else? off the Just table in Dragon Ridge person to be welcome. I work for Bellathor. General Goods Store. That sounds useful. I can certainly sell off some of the stuff to get the coins to pay Ferengar. Sure there it is. So, this sign here means he is a general goods merchant. He will buy and sell just about anything. Very useful to a player, because you often end up with gear that you have trouble you selling. You like. Typically, I'll use him as a last resort after selling off all the specialized gear, but at this point, we'll have enough to really worry about that. Everything's for sale, my friend. Oh, he's a Brit. Everything. How nice. If I had a sister, Fellow Brit to talk sell her to. in a second. Isn't it obvious? Why, the wonderful weather and hospitable people, of course. It's great, isn't it? Not to mention my great fondness for dragons and petty political power struggles. Oh, I know, right? I just made friends with the art. Ah, uh, but without a doubt, the most compelling feature of this frozen wasteland is the volley of inane questions leveled at me on a regular basis. No, being sarcastic. What a disappointing Breton you are. Some may call this junk. Me, I call them treasures. So I still have that price bonus on me, I believe, which would make all my buying and selling much better. So let me sell off all this junk. Arrows I can't sell for them yet, I'll be able to later on. I guess I'll just get rid of them. This stuff is better than what I'm currently wearing, but I'm a maid, so I won't really be wearing armor. It's good to sell things in sets in terms of that gives you less XP, which is good for me. If you want to get more XP, you want to sell things individually. No, he actually is going to run out of money this time. That's a rarity. Well, in that case, I'll buy some lockpicks from him. I just got so lucky with the gear that spawned. Well, in that case, I will sell you that stuff. And that. And I don't need stamina potions. And maybe I'll sell that to a blacksmith. Several of those are. Oops. I'm going to pretend that didn't happen. So. One of the best things about White Wind is that it has the most blacksmiths of any town in the game. I mean, Bellathor sells some blacksmithing goods. Up on the hill there you have Yorlin Greyman, allegedly the best blacksmith in Skyrim, although he has the worst selection of anybody. That place sells blacksmithing gear, especially arrows. Inside here there's a blacksmithing store, and outside here is a separate blacksmithing store. Really fantastic. So they will only buy blacksmithing appropriate kinds of stuff, but I have plenty of that to sell at this point. They will sell me some lockpicks, which I could use more of. Don't forget Later on you have plenty of those things, but early on in the game when your lockpicking skill is low, it's easy to run out and run into a single... easy to run out and run into a single high-level lock, which can happen. Interesting conversations which I can't justify listening to right now. I'll follow up on that later. How interesting, some kind of, some kind of street preacher. I'll find out more about that later too. Helgen. Destroyed by a dragon. Hard to believe, isn't it? Oh I know. And I was there. So, the way you get spells in Skyrim, basically is you either find the book, like I found the Sparks Tome in that dungeon. Literally in a dungeon. Or you buy them from shopkeepers like Farangar here, who will have to disappoint by not being at Bleak Falls Barrow. Oh, I thought you were already on your way to Bleak Falls Barrow. So, you wish to master the arcane arts. So, many interesting spells in this game, but most will not be useful to my character right now. The ones that I really need, I need a better summon. That's a fantastic one for a while. I need... I want this eventually, but I can't really afford it now. I don't have the mana for it yet. It'll be good later on. I need this thing. And I also want this. Other than that, I'll save my money for a little bit. Stone Flesh would be nice. I can't really spend enough mana to you know, make good use of it yet. But I've got the important stuff right now. Off to Bleak Falls Barrow with you. Yes, yes, I'm going. And I'm 
hungry and going to take some stuff off the table. Ale is useful. I'll tell you why ale is useful later on. For now, I am just hungry and there's no food on these tables. I'm an unhappy Breton. Well, there's food over here in the kitchens. I'm sure they won't mind me taking some of that. And I can cook this stuff up. So I won't be making any soup, as I said. I will even eat a mammoth snout. I'm that hungry. Won't make any soup. Soup is absurdly powerful. It turns into like a sunlock machine. But I am quite willing to do other kinds of harmless cooking like that. So, let me eat that. 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 Now I better get on my way. Look how fast I'm going to Bleak Falls Barrow. I'm really prioritizing your quests, guys. Conspicuously. That's important to know, though, that you can stop combat. It doesn't really always work, but it's important when you accidentally hit some person that you didn't mean to. Cause trouble in White Run, and I'll haul you into the Yeah, because that will happen otherwise. Right. Well, it's time Hjalti headed off to Bleak Falls Barrow for his first real quest. And his first real dungeon. I have the tools for the job now, so I should be able to do it just fine. Legendary difficulty and all. Especially because I'm still level 1, so the dungeon will be a relatively weak one. I may well level up in it, but it should stay weak for that reason. Oh, I must have missed Irela sending off the soldiers. They're often there being sent off on their job. Alright. So begin the adventures of Hjalti Montrose. Hope you all enjoyed that video, and I welcome your feedback about it. Have a great day, everyone.